Good morning. What a beautiful day. Let's pray. God, we're so thankful for today. Be glorified, Lord, in Jesus' name. Well, it's pre-recording, pre but as I share this or record this, I just finished my first meal after 14 days of fast. Woohoo! Great deal. Uh, the Cambodian pho, wow, amazing. I actually posted a dino cafe and restaurant video uh, up. Check it out. Fantastic food, and especially being my first meal after 14 days. Whew, it was heavenly. Well, let's continue with Genesis 39, 13 through 23. I don't know if we're going to go through all this. such a long uh, verses. So today I'm going to go maybe just a few verses at a time and see how far we can go. This is word of the Lord, NIV. When she, the crazy woman, Potiphar's wife, the cougar, <laughs> that's my, my translation. When the cougars, I mean, when she saw that she... He had left his cloak in his hand and had run out of the house. She called her household servants. Look, she said to them, this Hebrew has been brought to us to make sports, fools, laugh, mock out of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. No, he screamed and ran like hell because, old woman, leave me alone. Right? Now, all that energy, all that lust, all that sexual desire she had for a young man has turned into bitterness, anger. You Are you mocking me? Are you making fool out of me? Are you making sports and all that evil and that she saw Joseph laughing at her that's what mocking means to laugh are you laughing at me are you shaming me really I'm not good enough for you you young man <laughs> wow Matthew Henry writes it is no new thing for the best men best of men to be falsely accused of the worst of crimes by those who themselves are the worst of criminals. Wow, how appropriately said. How appropriately said. You know, such a great man that I knew were so falsely accused. It's so unbelievable. You think the evil in men that who do these things? Um, for example, my spiritual mentor, Munsoko Moksanin, planted a church. I'm not plant, uh, you know, he was he was my mentor since 1976, 77. Um, and he, he went around the world getting four PhD. He actually wrote four doctoral theses. Four. Um, and uh, published about 40 books on theology. I mean, just incredible man. He had a publishing house. I published my first three, four books with him and great man of integrity. Well, and he took over. After he retired from seminary, he uh, went to New York and took over this large church, thousands of members. And of course, I go there and preach for him. And it was just great, great time. He's just so happy. Um, but then really a devil's you know, demonized people who happen to be elders of the church. And I'll explain really how demonized they are. These demonized elders wants to kick him out of the church. So guess what they did? It's, it's, you know, to think like, wow, that's elder of a church. They got in contact with local, local thugs, mafia type, Chopok type, the gangster type, hire them. And they came to Korea and used Korean hacker to hack into his email system and wrote a very explicit romantic letter supposedly sent by his secretary to him and fabricate the whole email, chain of emails in his account. 
And then the elder made it public to the newspaper. These are the emails that went around. And I read it. I read the article. I'm thinking, there's no way my spiritual mentor would do stupid things like that. And especially that girl that they accused of, she was such a great woman of God. Matter of fact, I had, I, I had a publisher that I work in Korea. There was the publisher's older sister. And she's the one who sponsor my third poetry book or fourth poetry book she gave ten thousand dollars so that we print this beautiful book and i ran around and you know sell the book for mission cause in cambodia russia at the time russian mission and so i know her very well i know him very well for many decades and they fabricate this love email oh i desire you i want to be with you i want to have intimate time with you and i mean from my gosh and guess what it, they made it into a newspaper. And oh my God, the hell broke loose and basically went to the court because the, the demonized elder was trying to kick him out so that he would take control of the church, the finance, all the whole bit. And then later investigation found out who fabricate and guess what? Those thugs, without really thinking, that they went to Korea and they were driving and got caught in a, some traffic violation. Police look at his file because he's a Korean citizen. Guess what? He was under arrest. He was looking for because he's a criminal. You cannot forge into someone's account and write email. So they're imprisoned in Korea. But till this day, the word got around that Pastor Moon is a evil person, sexual pervert, have sex with his secretary and all kinds of freaking nonsense. And that demonized elder, I didn't think there was any consequence because would he go to heaven? Do you think he deserved to go to heaven? Because he said, oh, I believe in Jesus. I love Jesus. Please, I love Jesus. Yeah, but you're damned. You should go to hell for doing things like that to a man of God. You know, and I pray that they repent like crazy because he ruined someone's career, character assassination, more than killing. And, and, and I mean, he discouraged literally tens of thousands of Christians in the U.S. And maybe some of them left church because of you, you yeah. punk, you demonized elder. Yeah. You really need to repent. And I'm just so mad. When a demonized elders like that run the church, you know? Wow. Wait a minute. <laughs> Just did three, two verses. Okay. But, well, might as well end with this. So in Cambodia, my good friend for almost 15 years, she's a missionary. She serves in jail ministry and she just... You know, I mean, after many years of traveling crazy in a small four-cylinder car, she just bought something like, I think it's still four-cylinder, but SUV, nice, nice SUV. And she was, yeah. after jail ministry, she was coming out. And then at the cross junction where there was a CCTV filming, because it's, it's near a uh, prison, middle of the night, some idiot, probably drunk, come and hit her. And he was all videotaping CCTV. Guess what it was? It was a Rolls Royce. How do you get hit by a Rolls Royce in Cambodia? <laughs> That's crazy. How many Rolls Royce is there in Cambodia? But she was hit by a Rolls Royce. And she said, oh my gosh. And police was called and they all made the report. Because she was sitting. She wasn't driving. She was standing still at the stop sign. Some idiot comes and hit her and she thought okay well we'll settle it but then the court would not call her for 70 days and she was puzzling matter of fact she started talking to us oh this is weird you know and no one's calling guess what 70 days later they sue her for $30,000 damage on their Rolls Royce 
because the Rolls Royce was owned by the judge's nephew or something. And judges knew that CCTV in the corner has to be erased 60 days later. So judge knew, oh, so to nephew, no, 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 don't go to court. Because you hitting her is videotaped. So let's wait 60 days out. <laughs> the 70th day they saw her for 30 freaking dollars. 30 freaking thousand dollars. That's a lot of money for her. And the idiot who drove in Rolls Royce now wants $30,000 to fix his $250,000 car. When evil decide to frame you, well, you better pray hard. So Pastor Moon was telling me, well, how do you fight that? How do you fight demonized elder who is going to frame me at all costs? Hire a mafia to tap in, hack into my system. But when all was came out, at least he and his wife or happy, still sad, because he still carried lots of wounds, because people he trained, people he loved, all left, accusing him. Um, and he's, I don't think he ever got back to his formal, but I mean, that's, that's the, I guess, reward you have in heaven, for taking that cross and bearing it. You know, and my friend Grace also, now they went to court and they said, okay, just give us $10,000 and we'll forgive you. I mean, can you hear? And the, the judge, the idiot is saying that, yeah, just give my nephew 10000 we'll just settle it. And she hired a lawyer and the lawyer said, yeah, we can win. We can win against a crooked judge in Cambodia. But the crazy thing is, my friend Grace, according to Jenny, she's happy. She still it, don't let that phase her about serving God. And I mean, she could be in place. God, I serve you. I try to serve prison system. And I did all this, but why is this? No, she doesn't do that. She's the, that's the cross I bear. Take the hands, the pierced hand, and move forward. Yes, Lord. That's the gospel of suffering. <laughs> Oh, Holy Spirit, God, have we been accused of wrongdoing falsely by demonized evil people and false rumors? It's not even have to be great rumors. It's just small rumors, you know, question in doubt. Do you think he really meant that? Oh, the devil's whisper. Oh, you think he really loves you? Oh, you mean he did that for... Really? For you or just for his glory? Oh, you think that he did all that? And oh my goodness, all these devil's whisper shared in the context of prayer request. And God says, demonize people, Lord, all over. Demonize people in church, Lord, I cast them out. Lord, cast them out, Lord. Let the blood of Jesus come, cleanse house. Let's pray. I pray against all the demonized elders, deacons, and so-called Christians in the church, breaking the body of Christ to be just there. They'll be broken. They'll be cast out. Their falsehood will be found out. And no more nonsense. Cleanse the house of the church first. Cleanse the family. Cleanse the house of God first, Lord God. All these evil doors from church. Cleanse them. Let them be found out. That we could really have a body of Christ that is focused on taking up your cross daily, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you. See you tomorrow. Mwah.